Hey everybody, this is PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery. Got a rare summer bow review for you today. We wanted to tell you about the brand new PSE Omen. This is a great new flagship hunting bow from the folks at PSE. And what I'm gonna call this is, I'm gonna call this a speed bow. Uh, this bow is built for speed. You can see that more vertical profile of the limbs as opposed to parallel. The brace height here, five and a half inches on this E2 cam. There's two different versions of it. Uh, and it's got blazing IBO speed ratings up to 356 feet per second. But what I wanted to tell you about is I've shot speed bows over the years and generally they don't agree with me too well or I don't agree with them, however you want to put it. Uh, I just don't shoot them very well. That f anytime you get under six inch brace height, I usually struggle with consistency. Uh, sometimes I even nick my arm a little bit. They just don't seem to be as forgiving and I just don't shoot them that well. Well, I can tell you that is not the case with this PSE Omen. This thing shot like a dream, blew away my expectations of a speed bow. We'll get into the details of the technologies PSE put into this bow, but first, let's check out the specs. The PSC Omen with the E2 cam measures 33 inches axle to axle. It's gonna have an IBO speed rating of 356 feet per second. Brace height is gonna measure five and a half inches. The let off is gonna be available in 80 to 90% or 65 to 75%. Draw length range is gonna be on a rotating mod adjustable from 27 inches to 31 inches. It's gonna be available in peak draw weights of 60, 70, and 80 pounds. And the bow itself has a mass weight of 4.5 pounds. The PSE Omen with the S2 cam also measures 33 inches axle to axle. It's gonna have an IBO speed rating of 345 feet per second. It's gonna have a brace height of five and a quarter inches. The let off is gonna be available in either 80 to 90% or 65 to 75%. The draw length range is gonna be on a rotating mod adjustable from 24 and a half to 28 and a half inches. It's gonna be available in peak draw weights of 60, 70, and 80 pounds. And the bow itself will have a mass weight of 4.5 pounds. All right, PSE Omen, as we mentioned, 33 inches axle to axle. That's a good uh, length for a bow there. It's not too short that it feels unstable, not too big that it's gonna be uncomfortable hunting. This is gonna be a bow that's gonna feel stable, that 33 inches. You can see that riser there, tons of cutouts PSE came up with. That's one of the ways that they were able to keep this bow at four and a half pounds. Uh, but the real machining of this bow up here, Take a look at that big E2 cam. We told you there were two versions. I did shoot and test this E2 cam. This is the faster one, up to 356 feet per second. Look at that cam, that is a huge cam right there. And so what I will tell you about the draw cycle, again, this is a five and a half inch brace height. So it's gonna be a longer draw because you're starting from a shorter position with that string. You have to get it all the way back. You definitely do feel a hump towards the end of the cycle. Uh, and that's typical with speed bows that I've shot in the past. But this one is not an unbearable hump. It's you exert some effort and then right at the end, you just feel that you gotta give it a little more to get the cam to roll over. Again, it is not harsh. You do notice it, you will notice it on the draw cycle, but it's not something that's gonna bother you. It didn't bother me anyway and I generally don't like uh, too harsh of a draw cycle. All right, so sticking with the E2 cam, you know, it's got the rotating mod there for adjustable draw length, and something PSE did uh, the starting last year is they made the cable tracks, the payout tracks on both sides of the cam, they made them wider, which is gonna spread that load on the axles out over a bigger area. They also came up with a new bearing system that's beefier in there, again, just to ease that pressure on the axles there. Uh, so you will notice a little wider stance here in between the limbs. 
So the draw stop here, it is a big, beefy, flat draw stop. Um, so it does hit the cable when you come to full draw. And sometimes because that cable gives, when you have a cable draw stop, the back wall feels kind of spongy. But with that big flat stop there, it comes around and contacts that cable and it just feels super solid. So that was nice. Again, we mentioned, you can see that profile of the limbs. It is not parallel. That's one of the ways that PSE was able to get some speed into that, make those limbs a little bit more vertical. So PSE redesigned its limb pocket system recently to make it lighter and more stable. They were able to take some material out to reduce some of the weight, but they didn't want to give up that stability. So they call this their limb vice pocket system. And what you're going to see here is on the back at the pivots, there are Allen screws on both sides. It tightens into the handle so that this part of the limb pocket is going to keep everything straight, lined up. You're not going to have to worry about your limb pockets moving on this bow. Coming down the bow, you're going to notice their guard lock cable arm. Another new feature PSE came out with about a year ago or so to where it is bolted in place to the riser with two screws there. So you know that thing can't shift up or down. And it's a straight arm, straight cable arm. They do have an Allen screw here so that you can move it left or right. So if you are tuning or uh, you know, you're trying to deal with arrows with big fletchings, you can move that cable arm in or out to get that tune the way that you want it. It is a nice rolling cable arm there, so it's super smooth at the draw. You don't even notice any of that's happening. The cables roll through nice, and the rollers itself, they roll nice on that cable arm. All right, another new feature. This is the first bow that I've had in my hands that has the three different rest mounting options. So it does have the dovetail for the QAD integrate style rests. You can see that's what I have mounted on here. Just a dovetail mounted or machined into the riser and then you have the QAD integrates which clamp onto that. Underneath the rest here there are two screw holes drilled into the riser. Hamsky last year came out with that Epsilon that bolts straight to the back side of the riser so they were able to eliminate the side arm of the rest. Uh, so that's another mounting option if you get that Hamsky Epsilon. You also have the options to bolt that right to the back of the riser. And of course it does have your standard uh, two burger holes here so that you can mount any hour rest that has that side arm. Of course, the two bolts is nicer than one because then, just like the cable arm, if you've got the room to get two bolts in there, you know that rest can't pivot. Then something else PSE carried over, they've had this the last couple years, is this unique harness system here they call their precision bus tuning system. So it acts like a split yoke, but instead of coming out to the sides of the limbs here, it goes to the sides of the cam, just allows it to be more streamlined. But you can do what we call yoke tuning. If you get a tiny uh, paper tear that you're trying to clean up there, you can twist one yoke, take a twist out of the other to really fine tune that cam position and get it uh, where you need it to produce that bullet hole. So they've had that precision bus tuning system for a couple years now and it's been working great. Up front here, for those of you who like stabilizer mounting options, you've got your standard bushing right underneath the handle. If you like to get that weight a little bit lower and push it out front, you've got another stabilizer mounting position. Now you can see what that would do. This is an 11 inch bar. I could probably get away with a six inch bar here and have just as much extension out front, stabilizer action. So that's going to be a lighter stabilizer and a shorter one, but it's going to produce the same action as this longer stabilizer. And of course, you've got your bushing on the back. If you want to mount a side rod from the back, you've got an option to do that too. All right, so as I said in the beginning, PSE Omen, I view this as a speed bow because of the properties in it, that short brace height, big cam, more vertical limbs there, and of course the speed ratings. And as I said, to me that creates a certain expectation of 
how I expect this bow to shoot. And it just didn't do that. It, it, the draw cycle is nice. It does have that extra effort at the end. Uh, the shot is nice. I didn't have that shot inconsistency that I was expecting. With that super short brace height, you know, twitches in your hand can cause left-right variances. I just didn't have that problem with this bow. It shot nice. I sat out here shooting at 30 yards. The arrows went wherever my pin was. If it was on the dot, the arrow went into the dot. So what I will tell you about speed is because I was concerned about that draw cycle before I even drew it, I reduced the weight on this bow. It's a 70 pound max weight. I took turns out to get it to 63 pounds draw weight. I was shooting a 477 grain arrow and I got 285 feet per second at 63 pounds. That's faster than other bows that are much faster than other bows I've shot at 70 pounds. So if you shoot the spec arrow that PSE would have used for their testing, your speed's going to be through the roof. Um, so just a super nice shooting bow that is screaming fast. That again is something that I wasn't prepared for, for it to shoot as nice as it does. But this thing is a dream to shoot. All right, so that is the PSE Omen. Great new bow out from the folks at PSE here in the summertime, just in time for the fall hunting season. If you're still looking for your bow, check out the PSE Omen. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that bell to get notifications whenever we put out new videos. As always, if you have any questions, you can visit us at LancasterArchery.com.